Well, hey, superstars, welcome to part two, three, two point one two. I'm not sure what part this is of uh, sticker bombing the polo here. So first go, we uh, threw some stickers on the dashboard and on the rear wing, that didn't work very well. So we ripped them off, we put a dash pad on the dashboard and we tried the rear wing again. So first time was just the stickers on their own and they didn't last more than a few weeks. Then we threw some new stickers down and we put varnish on top of them and that seems to have done a better job. We're going to weather test that for a while. I'll report back to you on the varnish. And now we're moving on to the next test. So we're going to do the bonnet here on the polo and we're going to throw the stickers down and we're going to coat these in clear coat and see how that survives. So the bonnets are pretty dirty as you can see. The old paint's um, coming up real real bad so we're going to clean this off give it a bit of a sand make sure we've got a nice solid base to lay those stickers down on and then once the stickers are down we'll throw some clear coat over it we're going to have to do lots of coats to try and get a nice thick layer to protect those stickers and uh, we'll see how they turn out compared to the varnish so come along for the ride let's get stuck into it I'm sure it doesn't look much better on camera, but we have gone through now and we've got all the loose, flaky clear coat off. Everything that's left is still stuck down pretty well. As I said, we're not prepping for paint here. All we're doing is trying to get all the loose stuff off to give these stickers the best chance to get some adhesion. And we've also scuffed up all the, uh, the good clear as well. So we'll give this a good clean down, let it dry out, and then throw some stickers down. There we go, we've given that a good clean down. We're gonna let um, the cleaning product dry out completely. It was uh, mineral terps that I used, so make sure that's completely dry. Whilst I do that, I'm gonna prep some of the edge stickers. As I mentioned in a previous video, good thing to do is cut up a whole bunch of stickers straight down the middle so you have straight edges for the sides of your panels. So I'm gonna do that, and then once I've done that, this will be all ready to go. We'll give it one last quick wipe down and get sticking. Thing I've been looking at is this edge here it's obviously got a curve in it so the straight edge halves that we've been cutting up aren't going to work on here so I've had a bit of a play and I think I've worked out the way I'm going to do it this may not be best for you uh, depending on how you feel about your paint but obviously I don't care about this paint and we're going to clear over this when we're done so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to overlap the stickers a little bit along here and then I'm going to use my razor to cut it back into the top side of the hood there so I'll show you what I mean. Okay so here's what I'm thinking if we take our straight edge here and we just lay it a little bit over the curve like that make sure it's stuck down nice and then we can take our exacto knife and use our finger as a bit of a guide we want it to stay on the flat of the hood So I've managed to lay this whole section down without doing any cutting along this flat edge here. So that's good. Just remember you want to set it back a little bit from the lip. Make sure it stops on the flat of the hood rather than going over the curve. Because as soon as you start going over the curve or the lip of the steel there, that's when the sticker will start to lift. So I'll make sure it's right there on the edge of the flat. So I actually found a better technique than uh, scouring the paint with a scalpel uh, is actually to cut your stickers short. So put your big ones in place and then cut some short stickers out 
and overlap them and you won't get a perfect curve you'll get a bit of a angled curve but it's better than running the scalpel through your paint I think and it's only on close inspection that you can see that those angles change. That's all our edges done. We're going to start filling in the blanks now. So remember, use all those boring stickers and the ones you don't like first to uh, fill up the real estate and then keep the ones you like aside, throw them on at the end so they're the ones that show. finished product. Now we're going to go straight in whilst everything's stuck down nicely. We're going to mask everything off quickly with some sheets and things. It's pretty easy to do with a hood. And then we're going to lay down some clear straight away. <laughs> Well, that's almost it for this evening. We've got one more coat to go on. I'll leave you with that and then we'll catch up again tomorrow in the daylight and check out how we did. So, see you soon. Oh, and hey, one more thing. I was young and stupid once and I never used to wear a mask, but now I'm not as young and not as stupid. Wear a mask. It's the smart thing to do. Your older self will thank you for it, I promise, because my older self hates my younger self right now. Well, the two thick coats of clear have had a couple of days to fully dry and it does look really good. I'm happy with the finish and everything, but the problem is it has done exactly what I thought it would do and it's gone on very thin. So unfortunately that means it hasn't sealed the stickers and they still have the ability to peel. So you can see like, like that one there and a few more and it's so much so that it hasn't sealed the edges. You can still get your fingernail under there and and pick them up so I mean we could sit here and put copious coats of spray clear on but that's a really expensive way to do it so I've got one last ditch effort before we go on and, and just submit to the varnish so I went out and I got a can of clear rather than a spray pack and I'm going to apply the clear with brush hopefully it goes on thick enough to seal those stickers if it does and as I say, I'm really happy with the finish. I'm really happy, happy with the colour. I prefer it over the slightly tinted colour that the varnish does. So we're going to throw on a couple of coats of the lacquer here and see if it's thick enough to seal it all properly. And if not, then we'll have to submit to the varnish. But fingers crossed, this will be enough. <laughs> So the product's drying really quickly, you've got to put a lot of it on for it to fall in and have a smooth finish or else you get really bad um, brush marks. So I'm just going to experiment with this roller to see if we can get a better finish. Well, it's actually six months later now and as you can see it's turned out fairly well the finish seems to be pretty good and uh, it's weathered well over the last few months you can see there are a few stickers lifting up that's from the original fail when they started to lift with the spray can and we can spot fix those little issues later when we have some time but the, uh, the roll on with the clear straight from the can seems to have done the job nicely so I'm happy with the way that's turned out 
And I think that's the method we'll be using moving forward. So we'll use clear straight from the can, get it on nice and thick and quick before the stickers have a chance to lift and then it should hold them all in place. So we'll move on with that method. We'll use it on the roof in the next part and uh, we'll hopefully get even better with practice. And so join us again for the next round, part three, as we finally do the roof and that should give us a bit of a finished product here with the old sticker bomb polo. See you next time.